my name is Hannah Lynn Roth. Thank you for tuning in to Our Ventura TV. With me today is my guest David Brown, wildlife and plant conservationist and biologist. And we're going to talk about wildlife conservation. Hi David, thank uh, you for joining me. Hi Hannah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh yeah, thank you. I'm totally stoked that you're here. Um, so first off, let's just ask right away, what is a plant and wildlife conservationist? Uh, well, I'm interested in, in the conservation of plants and animals and helping people appreciate the, the great biological diversity that lives around us. We live in a really special uh, part of the world in California and especially in Ventura County. California is one of the top 25 places in the world for biological diversity, which I don't think a lot of people appreciate. There are many uh, fascinating and cool reasons to live in California, but our biological diversity is one of them. We have uh, more uh, endemic plant species than anywhere in the world, and what that means is we have more pl uh, endemic means a species that lives in only one area and uh, nowhere else in the world. So one third of the species of plants that live in California are found nowhere else in the world, and that is the highest amount of endemic uh, plant species in North America. Wow. So. You're saying that, that California itself has very unique qualities, like you said, found nowhere else in the world between plants and animals, and specifically even in our county alone. That's right. Uh, Ventura County, because of the number of unique environments we have, has uh, a great number of uh, plants that are found nowhere else in the world, uh, and it has a lot of bird species that visit uh, of the 600 species of birds that have been found in California, you can, five, you can find 500 of them here in Ventura County. Wow, 500. That's right. And uh, we have, obviously, we have a great ocean environment. So we have mm -hmm. seabirds. We have birds that live in the mountains and the forests. We have birds that live in the Santa Monica Mountains. And uh, so it's just, a, it's a fantastic place. So not only the, the, the birds, but uh, we have whales here in Ventura County off the coast that are um, the largest animals that have ever lived. Ventura County, especially around the Channel Islands, is where uh, it's the best place in the world to see blue whales. Oh, cool. Yeah, see, I, I love, you know, ocean creatures and stuff like that. I always go like, woo, woo, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you know, well, if, you, see a fin, you if anybody wants to see uh, a spectacular display of ocean life that you can't see anywhere else in the world, uh, taking a trip out to the Channel Islands is probably uh, one of the best things you can do in Ventura County. Okay, and so, so th this is the different types of plant life, or um, animal life. Uh, as a conservationist, what do you do to, with, with these, these things? Like, what's the effects, um, you know, that, that, that you're um, trying to help the, the cause? Uh, that's, that's a great question. So, I, my, uh, my Working theory is that anybody who is interested in plants and animals can be a conservationist. Uh, I think what, what I try and do is help people appreciate the great diversity that's around them. Uh, first, to be aware that it's there, because I don't think a lot of people know that we live in this special place. And the second is to be aware of issues that are facing the survival of these plants and animals. Uh, plants and animals, like a, a lot of them like to live in the same place people do. So in the way that we've expanded our uh, housing developments, in the way that we've expanded our agriculture, a lot of habitat for these plants and animals has been lost. And people are part of the environment, so I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't develop things or we shouldn't grow food. Obviously, we have to live in the world, too. But there's a way to do it exactly. with the coexisting Exactly. California has a law called the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA. And what that law does is it it requires people who want to develop uh, an area to go out and do a survey for the plants and animals that are there and come up with a plan for their conservation. And uh, so my day job is being a biologist with an environmental consulting firm to, to go out and actually help develop those plans. And sort of my uh, spiritual job, if you will, as a conservationist is to help people get involved with the activities needed to preserve plants and animals. So. Uh, helping, I, I lead people on nature hikes. I've been doing, I've started doing that in the, for the Camarillo Park District. 
Uh, I'm involved with an organization called the California Native Plant Society, which exists to help uh, protect California's unique plant life that we talked about a few minutes ago. Okay. And uh, if anybody's interested in getting involved with conservation activities, there are several organizations in the region that you can get involved with. The Audubon Society leads bird hikes, so you can get to know our local bird life. The California Native Plant Society leads plant hikes, so you can get to know our plants. Uh, we have a, uh, the Channel Islands National Park where you can go out to the islands and go on a hike or go on a ocean cruise around and get to know you, get the ocean life. So I guess my, my primary mission as a conservationist is to help people get to know the, the great uh, fascinating biological diversity around us. Okay. And um, what would you say are some main basic things that we do that affect you know on a day-to-day -day, things that every everyone does what are little things that we could do to help with this i mean because not everyone is going to have time to be able to go out and do these kind of things what's something that an everyday person can do to help um with with these kind of species and environments because i mean sure i'm sure we don't even know how it affects how does how does us affecting them affect us all at the same time? Well, that's a great question. Um, I'd say, you know, obviously one of the first answers that people give is that there are a lot of conservation issues that require funding. So a lot of people say, well, you can uh, give money to your favorite local conservation organization. Um, but I think even more fundamental than that is just to be aware and appreciate the diversity around us. And like you said, not everybody has, a, has time to go on a hike. But uh, you can plant native plants in your garden at home uh, or in your yard. Um, so a lot of what the California Native Plant Society does is try and raise awareness of the great landscape properties of our native plants that we have here in California that are adapted to the climates we live in. So instead of planting a lawn, you could plant a landscape of native plants. Um, that helps attract local insects and birds. OK, so, so instead of planting a plant, um, that's not from our area. How do, how, how does that um, affect? Because I know you said it attracts local, um, you know, bugs and things like that. But what? How does that benefit overall? Like planting with a, a local plant rather than some. Sure. Else? Well, one tangible thing is that it reduces water use because the plants that have evolved here in California have evolved to our dry landscape. So they use water very sparingly. So a native plant garden can use less water, considerably less water than a, a, a garden made up of exotic plants from other parts of the world. Um, uh, it can attract local insects, which help pollinate not just your garden, but other things. So you ask sort of what, do, what does the local biological diversity do for us? Well, one tangible thing that, that our local insects do is they help pollinate our, uh, our yards and our crops. Okay, so with the planting of a local plant, you attract natural habitats, or na natural um, insects and creatures, I should say, that help um, the, the, the spread and the pollination of the actual wildlife around That us. helps preserve our local ecosystem, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's great. So that's one way we can help. Um, what about the things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, like um, this recycling or... Um, sure. Uh, you know, th those kind of things that, that people practice nowadays. Um, does it have to do... I think, yeah, I think that's definitely helpful. Obviously, the, the less resources that we're uh, using or the, the using resources wisely helps wildlife by not having us need to go out and either uh, convert more habitat to cropland or to, um, you know, if we can develop uh, areas of our towns that are maybe run down and rebuild them, that prevents us from having to bump out the areas of our towns. So that's definitely something that, that is helpful, sort of uh, urban planning that uses our existing development footprint definitely helps us from not having to, to convert more habitat to human use. Uh, okay. uh, so when did this awareness kind of begin? Like, how did, when did we start realizing, hey, this is affecting 
everybody. We need to do something about it. Well, I think if you, if you look back historically, it seems like uh, the 60s and 70s is when people started noticing that, uh, you know, that there were plants and animals around us that were going extinct, and that's when the, the federal government enacted the Endangered Species Act, and when the state government in California enacted the California Environmental Quality Law that I mentioned. So I think it's been a long period of awareness. Uh, certainly the development of Earth Day was a, a way that people became aware. I think kids now, because they have access to so much information and imagery that mm -hmm. even I didn't have when I was a kid through the internet and through oh, yeah. videos. Uh, even me as a kid. <laughs> yeah, right, it's, it's just grown exponentially. Now, now you can practically see pictures or a video of animals anywhere. Um, and, you know, I think that just gives us opportunities to, to be aware of our environment. So I think it's been an, a, a sort of a slow process that now is exploding uh, that allows us to be aware of what's going on with our environment and with our local plant and animal species. Right, right. And if these plants and animals start to die, then, I mean, with us, like, how does that... Why, does, why should we why, care why about it? Why should we care about it? Oh, well, right? that's a good question, you know, and I, I think that the, we have to be honest and say that the extinction of some local plants or animals that are obscure that not a lot of people have heard about ultimately may not hurt us, but I think that the reason we should care and the reason that it may hurt us in the long run is that these plant and animals have been here for a long time, and if they start to disappear, that means that we're doing something to the environment that ultimately will probably undermine our own survival. And one concrete example of that are frogs. We have more native species of amphibians, frogs, toads, and salamanders in California than anywhere else in the world. Or, not, excuse me, not anywhere else in the world, but anywhere else in North America. Okay. And a lot of these species of frogs have started to disappear. And frogs are very sensitive to the environment. They, they breathe through their skin, more or less. So mm -hmm. if they're going extinct because the water quality that they're living in is toxic, then that probably Means indicates that. to us that we're doing things to our water system that, that aren't good for us either. Right, so if the plants and animals around us are dying, then we potentially or slowly. It's like right? the proverbial <laughs> canary in the coal <laughs> mine. Exactly, <laughs> right. It's the literal canary in the coal mine. The coal mine being our very environment where we have to live. Right. Wow. So that's a lot to take in and very, very important stuff, which you said, you know, we need to kind of educate our children. That way we're more aware and we can continue to fix this ongoing uh, condition and you know harmonize with, right. with everything around us well, plant animal humans coexist I think one of the traps you can fall into is to be so, sort of fall into despair it's it, they're very big issues uh, they're very complicated and as an individual maybe you feel like you know you can't do anything so it's easier to just plug in your iPod or go see a movie or something but I think uh, the, the real message is that we live in a, this spectacular place with this biological diversity, and you as an individual just becoming aware of it and appreciating it uh, means a lot. I think that's sort of the fundamental thing that, that conservationists can do, is to right. give people that vision that you can enjoy the environment around you. Well, awesome. Thank you very much, David. And is there a way that the viewers can contact you for more information about this? Uh, I am the conservation chair of our local chapter of the California Native Plant Society. And our, my contact information and the list of hikes that, that the California Native Plant Society does is uh, available at our website, which is cnpsci.org. OK, well, thank you very much, David. My name is Hannah Lynn Roth, and thank you very much for tuning in to Aravintura TV. Mm -hmm.